Here is Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker. Bonnie is leaning against Clyde. Clyde was a master gunman. Seldom did anyone ever live when Clyde got the first shot. When life denies you a chance to earn an honest living, desperation takes hold. It was during the depths of the Great Depression that countless souls veered off the path of lawlessness. In this unforgiving landscape, one woman named Bonnie found herself at a crossroads, her dreams suffocated by a relentless reality. She joined forces with a charismatic outlaw named Clyde, not simply for the thrill of it all, but as a means to defy the system that had turned its back on her. But Bonnie's life was not as it seems at first. There are always two sides of a coin. So let's uncover the one that's the shocking tale of Clyde's partner in crime. Bonnie Parker, born in Rowena, Texas, was the third child of Charles Parker and Emma Krause. She had an older brother named Hubert, nicknamed Buster, and a young sister named Billie Jean. When Bonnie was four years old, her father passed away suddenly, and her mother moved the family to Cement City to live with her widowed mother. Bonnie possessed many talents, excelling in academics and winning a spelling bee. She had a love for the arts, including singing, dancing, and writing. However, coming from Cement City, she had little chance of being discovered or having her talents recognized. The limited opportunities available to her were mostly low-paying jobs like waitressing, factory work, or clerical work. At a certain age, finding a husband who could provide financial support was a common expectation for women at that time. So, Bonnie, at the age of 16 in 1927, married Roy Thornton, a young man who seemed to fit the bill with his height, handsomeness, and car. Little did she know, though, that he'd swiped that snazzy ride straight from someone else's garage. Talk about stealing hearts and cars in one fell swoop. But just a few months after they got married, Roy vanishes out of the blue, not even bothering to leave a note. But guess what? He popped up again in January 1929. Bonnie, being the strong-willed woman she is, firmly kicks him out. And wouldn't you know it, not long after that, Roy gets nabbed for a robbery and gets sentenced to five years in the slammer. However, here's the twist. Regardless of the circumstances, Bonnie adamantly refuses to divorce him. After Bonnie's tumultuous relationship with Roy Thornton ended, she realized she needed to support herself and not rely on him. She found a job at Hargraves Cafe in a relatively good neighborhood. Bonnie's friendly and outgoing nature helped her earn better tips from customers. Waitresses in those days typically earned very little, around three or four dollars a week, and relied heavily on tips. Bonnie would even go the extra mile by taking orders from women working at the laundry across the street, delivering their food to them since they couldn't leave their jobs. Bonnie's presence was as vibrant as a flickering flame, her petite frame standing at a mere 4 feet 10 inches like a delicate flower in a wild field. With locks of curly blonde hair cascading around her, she possessed an allure that was uniquely her own. Though small in stature, her inner strength radiated like a beacon, refusing to be overshadowed by anyone. Despite her physical size, she carried herself with an air of confidence and grace. Her eyes, like sparkling embers, revealed a depth of character and unwavering resolve. And there came a person who saw those sparkling eyes. Enter Clyde Barrow, who was also living in the same area as she was, though their family circumstances were not as destitute as Clyde's transient camp by the Trinity River. In January of 1930, fate brought Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow together. And from that moment, an intense connection ignited between them. However, their blossoming romance faced an early obstacle when Clyde was arrested for a series of auto thefts, landing him behind bars in Waco while awaiting trial. As we reach this far in Bonnie's story, we can't help but wonder, what could have led a soft-hearted girl to turn towards a life of crime? Share your opinions in the comments below. Your perspective adds depth to our exploration of Bonnie's complex journey. Bonnie was determined to do anything to get Clyde out of prison. During one of her visits, Clyde gave her instructions to smuggle a gun into the prison. 
he knew where she could find one, so he passed her a note and she hid the gun under her dress, successfully getting it into the prison. On March 11, 1930, Clyde used that gun to break himself and his cellmates out of prison. However, their freedom didn't last long. They were arrested again two weeks later, and Clyde received a 14-year sentence at the violent Eastern Prison Farm in Texas. Clyde, tired of tough prison work, schemed with another inmate for an accident. They hacked off two of his toes with an axe, thinking it'd secure his parole. Little did Clyde know, his mom had already convinced the governor to parole him, and he was set free two weeks later in February 1932. Once out, Clyde tried to stay on the straight and narrow, finding work at a glass factory, but relentless police pressure cost him his job. Annoyed, he teamed up with Bonnie Parker to form a gang, and they began hitting shops and gas stations. By April 1932, Bonnie and another gang member were nabbed during a botched hardware store heist. Bonnie penned poetry about her and Clyde while waiting for the grand jury. She was eventually sprung and hooked back up with Clyde, and they resumed their life of crime with murders, robberies, and car thefts on the list. Bonnie and Clyde's M.O. was perpetual motion, crossing county lines to dodge the law. They zigzagged through Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, and Ohio, making full use of the growing U.S. highway network. Their felonies grew more serious, like gunning down a shopkeeper during a heist and shooting a cop. Bonnie never killed anyone herself, but she got a kick out of watching Clyde's lawlessness, which only egged him on. Their connection was less of a love story, more of a two-way dependency. The gang laid low in Joplin, Missouri, all holed up in an apartment. Their loud card games, random gunshots, and general lack of subtlety drew the neighbor's eyes. On April 2, 1934, a gunfight with the police broke out, costing two officers their lives. The gang got away, though, leaving all their stuff behind. Bonnie and Clyde, whose exploits had made them popular with the public at large, killed two Texas police officers who had approached their car. That crime quickly turned public opinion against the outlaw couple. Their destiny unfolded on a rural stretch of highway in Louisiana. A tip-off to the police had them tracking down Bonnie and Clyde, setting the stage for an unexpected encounter. Six brave law enforcement officers from three different units lay in wait, ready to catch their prey. The moment the duo's car breezed by, a hailstorm of bullets was unleashed. Bonnie and Clyde, even with guns in hand when the trap sprang, didn't get to fire back. Their car was caught in a brutal ballet of 112 bullets, around a quarter of which found their infamous targets. The post-mortem report was staggering. Clyde riddled with 17 bullet holes, Bonnie riddled with 26. Despite the couple's shared fate in life, their burial was not. A decision by their families saw them buried separately. Bonnie's funeral was a spectacle, as about 20,000 mourners came to bid farewell, paying their last respects to the notorious outlaw. And so ends the tale of Bonnie Parker, the enigmatic partner in crime to Clyde Barrow. But we know that your thirst for knowledge and fascination with stories of such daring couples doesn't end here. So just hit the subscribe button and join us on this incredible journey. Don't forget to show your appreciation by liking this video.